Today I'm going to teach you how to put a mortgage on your books, track your principal and interest correctly in QuickBooks Online and make it a lot easier when you submit uh, your taxes to your CPA. All right, please be sure to like this uh, video and subscribe to my Okay, I'm going to teach you how to track your loan on your rental property in QuickBooks. So a couple things we would, would happen if you're, let's say you're buying a small strip mall or a small office building. All of this is theoretical. First thing before you set up the loan is you need to put the building on the books. So buildings. Um, we're just naming the building. Okay. Now, let's say you took out a loan for, I printed out, I went on bank rate. Let's see if I can move this out of the way. Now, normally your lender is going to give you an amortization schedule, but since this is just for kicks, we're going to just follow this one. Um, a $500,000 mortgage, 15 years. Now remember anything in the commercial business, you're going to have to take it out in 15 years. They're not going to give you 30. Um, so we just came up with this. So let's say we're not going to get into how much you paid. We're just going to make this a, a really easy one. So another thing, I always tell anyone I train is don't do journal entries. That's how everybody gets things backwards. Just go into the register and do things transactionally. It'll just save everybody a lot of heartache. You're gonna make a journal entry, but it's gonna make sense too. So look at what I'm saying. Let's say today you bought a building, you didn't put any money into it. It was 100% finance, which we know would not happen. But for the sake of putting a loan on, well, I can show you. We'll, we'll play it a couple ways. Purchase of building, posting, loan amount. Okay. So we want to increase the building because we're putting the asset on saying it's, you know, the total amount of the loan is part of the building purchase. Okay, so 500,000. Oh, 5 million, wouldn't that be nice? Okay. Now we need a loan. I should have set that up before. I'm just making this up. You can put like the um, last four of the loan number. What if you have more than one? Usually not. In rental properties, usually they're one in LLC. Okay, but here we go. All right, so if we ran a report for our balance sheet, now this is a, 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 a QuickBooks Online I use for YouTube videos, so there's all kinds of other stuff. Look, the, right now the chicken egg out has a negative. But what we're looking for, oh, November 30th, so I've got to go to this next day. Like, where did it go? Okay. We have an asset of $500,000, and then we have the savings and loan liability right here. So we had 500 and 500. Let's say at closing, you had to pay $200,000. And let's, hopefully you use your LLC checkbook. And just for giggles, I will give this account some money. Equity. Oh, don't use opening balance equity, please. I don't even know what I have in here for equity yet. Should be like owner's contribution, owner's investment. Okay, let's say in the beginning of the year you gave 600000 Okay. So now let's say go to the closing. The, the bank gives the seller 500000 You have to give 200000 right? So the closing is today. 
We'll just write it, we'll write it out to the seller. There's all kinds of other closing costs. Uh, purchase, oops, seller. Did I say deposit? I just do this again. Check. Was our other building? And now we have another building, Route 52. Okay. Okay, so now let's go to the balance sheet. Go away and make it today's date. Okay, so now your building is worth seven hundred thousand, um, meaning that's how much you paid for it, either with with debt or with your own money. And now we have a loan of five hundred thousand. Okay, so now let's decide that it's in January and we have to make our first payment. If you look on this, our payment's going to be three thousand eight hundred twenty four ninety seven. I'm going to make that every month for. How many? 180 months. Okay. What I like to do, if let's see if we have interest in here. Interest paid. I would make a sub account because if you had more than one interest payment going out, you need to break them out. Don't put it all in interest paid because you know you're going to go back and look at it and then want to know how much you were paying on one building versus another. Also, in some other videos, I explained to add classes. But so like right under here, you could create a sub account easily. I, in QuickBooks Online, I always pick Office General Administration for everything for detail type. They're just tracking everything you're doing. And then I call it first savings, I think. Because if you had three loans going on in here, um, you want to make sure when you're running that you would know. Okay. Let's say it's on auto pay, so it's just an expense. Make sure you pick your right your checking account. See how it does that? It went in. Oh, we shouldn't have a MasterCard bank, so I should fix it. Okay. I have to set this up. Okay. Now you're gonna pick your loan, first savings loan, and you could even put in here payment number one or whatever. And then your payment, let's go back here. This is what posts against the loan. You're paying 3,800, but you're only getting this much to bring down your principal. The rest is going to interest, okay? So you just follow this schedule each month. And I'll show you how you make sure it's correct. Okay, copy this. And I was making classes, so why not make one really quick? I call this Route 52. So if you watch my other videos on how to break out different properties within one QuickBooks file, please, if you have more than one LLC, you need more than one QuickBooks file. Okay. And hopefully I did that in January. If you go up to this top search bar, you can be sure. See, it really would be like a month from now. So let's make it January 13th. That's an important thing to know that if you just go up into this search, the last things you entered are usually right there. So you'll see I put the last three, four entries I made. Okay. Okay, so each month you wanna check your running balance from your amortization schedule, right? You're gonna print this, I only need to snip two of them, but, and you're gonna cross check it because this is where everybody screws up. 
and you could reconcile it just like you do a bank account. So I'm gonna do that. So my date, I think I picked 1, 1, 13, 21. My ending balance is the running balance for the next month on your amortization schedule. And you put the date. You would do this, you'll get, you're gonna usually, I mean, please don't go paperless on these. Make sure they mail them to you because you'll have a horrible time later and you, if you do. So make sure they're paper, you get them and you do this once a month. Give it to your bookkeeper, save it for your accountant. Because I broke up the payment by interest, this is hitting the profit and loss right here. And only this is posting to your loan. I'll show you the other way to do it after we do this one. There's really two ways to do it. Okay, so my ending balance on my printout is 498050.03. Right here, clear balance 498050.03. Okay, so you're good. And then you would print these and put it with your statement. Okay, let me show you the other way. Let's say you get a new bookkeeper or you're not consistent. And this time you forget what you were doing. Let's say an entire year goes by and you have just posted all of them this way, where the whole entire payment is going to the loan. Okay. I always say to copy here in the description, put it in your memo, it depends on what report you'll run. And then you could also attach your statement right here. It's a good idea. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what'll go wrong here. So, in either way, this is right. But I'll show you the difference. What day did I enter it? Oh, put the wrong date, see? I put the wrong date here. It's gonna be 2021. Okay, so if you click the whole payment, you're off the amount of the interest for February. So what are you gonna do? I mean, your payment's right, but it didn't break out. What you could do, instead of breaking out your check, is you'll have to take away, because right now, look, that's bringing the loan balance down too low, because you're only getting 1,957 toward principal. So you would add, and you want to increase the loan balance. That's how you think about it. That's why I don't like to do journal entries by themselves. It's better to look at what will it do to your running balance, right? So 213.21. And in the memo, you would just write, and here you put your class on. My interest charged for that month is 1867.69. Go back here to reconcile. So now we have that in there and we're good. The other thing you can do, is, if that's like an auto pay, go back here. You can make it recurring. So you can't make the, the check with the two splits recurring because that interest will change. But if you just want all your payments to the loan to post each month, you can make this recurring. Let's say it's an auto pay. It's gonna come out on the first. So I already did those. The next one would be March 1st. How many? There's 180 payments and we already did two. So 178. right? And that will just post to your loan. But what you'll want to make sure is then you go into the register, even if you do it at year end, 
you don't want to miss all the you know your interest deduction and you'll go post each month's interest right so you could even post that ahead of time you know what they're all going to be you know i would you really want to watch this make sure you always get all your interest okay and then especially before you send this to your accountant let's say it's really 2020 you want to make sure on your balance sheet and in that register that this is what you have the 476 11 111 70 and that way each time you post on this your loan balance will go down so if we did our balance sheet Okay, so the other thing to know, especially if you're new to bookkeeping and you know this is one of your first properties and, and anything like that, your building is never going to change, right? I mean, you could have a lot more. I only put in two transactions to the, for the cost of this building, 500 with a loan and 200 with your own money. But that part is never going to change. The only piece that changes is your loan, okay? Here was a loan starting, and here was the two different ways to get it, you know, with the payment. So you had two payments in here. But this payment was the full payment. This is a split payment. And what I mean by split is there's more than one line. You'll see different reports in QuickBooks, and it'll say split, and that's why it, it can't tell you what code it was posted because it's more than one. So that's the terminology split. The other thing is, see, I'm breaking my own rules. You should post any description into your memo. All right, and then you just want your running balance on your um, loan to always match. So we've got 496, 092, 75, and see here. So that's how you uh, put a loan on the books and how you correctly post your principal and interest. All right, I hope you found this helpful. And if there's any other videos regarding landlord bookkeeping that you would like to see, please put it in the comments below. I hope you found this video helpful. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos about QuickBooks Online and landlord bookkeeping, please also subscribe and follow my channel. Have a great day.